Hi everyone. I have not made videos before, but I thought I'd give it a try. Um, today I'm going to do a couple of ring pours because I want to create some new backgrounds for my metal leafing. So I want to, I've got three of these hanging in my house. Um, in a row I've got two 12 by 12s and then one 14 by 14 and they're quite pretty. So I want to try and get another one of those backgrounds. And then um, I really like this background, so I want to try and recreate it. I haven't yet um, tried to recreate that one, but I'm going to give it a go. So let's see how it goes. First thing, these I'm going to do um, two 12 by 12 canvases. I want to make sure that they're nice and level because ring pours, you, oh, well, any pour actually you want to make sure it's level but I definitely don't want any tilting going on while <clears throat> messing up the composition. So it's nice and level. The colors that I've mixed are all mixed two to one. A uh, Floetrol to paint. Um, I used a little bit of water to get uh, my consistency. I don't know if you'll be able to see my consistency but I do tend to have them a little bit thicker um, it leaves a trailing mound, uh, and I don't know if you can see it better on the dark or the light, so I'll try both. You can just see it's coming off the stick easy enough, but it does make a mound. The colors that I have, surprisingly enough, for this, um, tree background kind of make it look like cherry wood. <laughs> You'll never believe the colors. The colors are... Um, dioxanine, dioxanine purple, um, prism violet, <laughs> quinacridone magenta, and um, cadmium yellow light hue. And then I make an orange out of mixing these two. So I'm going to get those out of the way because I've gone over the colors. And now I'm going to layer my cup for this, um, oh, I've got some dock hairs. For this one, I go um, dark to light. So I'm going to start, there's no silicone or anything in these. Just give them a stir. I mixed them up maybe an hour ago. I don't always do that, though. <laughs> give them a quick stir. Okay. Layer them in my cup. Um, and I have, for this 12 by 12 canvas, I have about, I want to say seven and a half ounces of paint. So I have one ounce of Floetrol to a half ounce of paint in each of the five cups for this one. And then thinned out a little bit with water. Put that aside. Now with the prism. I go in from the side a little bit just to kind of keep the layers. And what I found, I think, is happening um, with this prism violet when it mixes with that orange and yellow. It, um, I don't know. Violets and purples, they dry up pretty dark anyways. And I don't know, I just like the effect that it has in making that kind of cherry wood <laughs> flare. I can't believe these. I, the first time I did this, I had watched a Gina DeLuca, hats off to her, video. And these are, this, is, this was like her color palette at the time. And I really liked the effect she got, and I didn't get anything like them, of course. And I was so disappointed with how dark it dried. I put it aside for months. And just kind of trying to figure what I was going to do with it. And then it dawned on me to kind of try and leaf in a uh, tree of life over it. So that's what I did. And I loved it. So I did... <laughs> I have another one. I did three total with those colors. I did another one in just a series of greens with solid gold. It's very pretty. 
All right, so that's a pretty full cup of paint. Let me get these out of the way. I shouldn't need them at all. Because the other thing I like to do, just to make sure that it flows pretty well, is I mix up a little, little bit extra of the purple, the dioxanine. And I'm just gonna kind of run it around and get a little bit of a wet canvas. And I'm, I mean, my hands are gonna get messy anyway, so I'm just gonna use my hands, my fingers. And I'm gonna get the sides too. They'll all get covered, but this way it'll just kind of flow over the sides a little better. And if there are any little patches in my tilting, this color's there. It's I'm really surprised at how much darker purple dries. Sometimes it can almost look black when you mix it with other colors. Super dark. I don't really care about the middle as much as the edges. I really just want it to flow well. All right. Let's see what happens. Wipe my hands a little bit here. Gonna do kind of a straight pour down there. Maybe a little bit of here she comes. Different colors. Here comes the pink, magenta, and the prism. I'm just going to kind of stop the jiggle. Taking my time. Get that center just right. Which I never do. Get the center just right. So I usually just keep a little skewer or something and then go in. Because I do want kind of a spiral and I just kind of fix it before I start tilting because I see people that just end it perfectly and I am not one of them got a pretty little cup <laughs> okay let's see what happens I'm just gonna kind of start swirling it around Move it out a little bit. Okay. I'm going to start up up here. I don't want all that yellow. Just a little. Over here. I'm going to come right back down to this corner. Again, I don't want too much yellow, so I'm going to tip some of that off. Come back to the center a little. Whenever you're tilting, you do have to be careful to pay attention to the weight of the paint. So you don't get super... I mean, in this case, I want to have it be a little bit consistent. Now I want to check it out and see if I want to move anything down further. Actually, I think it looks pretty good. I don't think I want to do too much more tilting. I like kind of the wood grain I've got. Now, another thing I've done before is I've ruined <laughs> my paintings because I get all excited and I go to point something out and my paint on my gloves drips. So I don't want to do that at all so live and learn ah, 
We all fail, but do you fail forward or do you continue to make the same mistakes? <laughs> so now with my hands cleaned up a little, I really like this. This really does remind me of a wood grain. And I know it looks really purple right now, but so did this other one that I first showed you. It's going to dry a lot darker. And I'm pretty happy with that. It looks like a nice, decent wood grain. It's going to dry much darker and look like a, a cherry wood. Hard to believe, but it will. <laughs> I'll probably come back tomorrow. Uh-oh. Where did that stuff go? Okay. So I'm going to move this one aside. It's stuck. I made sure that this area is level also, where it's going to dry. Ah, stop. Okay. And now I have a new canvas to do. Let's put it down. Not that it matters that much because I'm going to have paint all over it, but I don't want to get too much purple in there. This color scheme I'm going to do for this one, for my kind of outdoorsy mountain feel. Where did my cup go? Okay, let's make sure this is level again, because this one I'm going to leave right here. Good. The colors I'm going to use for this one is, I like this Creative Inspir <laughs> Inspirations Payne's Gray, probably one of my favorite colors that I use a lot. And then I'm going to use Artist Loft Sap Green. And then any white, really, but I this one I'm using uh, Zinc White by Amsterdam. So I'm going to put these aside. So for these, same amount of paint, seven and a half ounces, but I only have three colors. So I have about two and a half ounces each. I did like I don't know, one and three quarters uh, paint flow trawl to maybe seven eighths ounces of paint and then thinned it with water. Have a little bit extra to put on my sides. And this one, I think I want the white in the middle so that it can kind of create the clouds that I'm looking for. I don't know, I've never tried to recreate this one, so give a quick stir. And here, let's check the consistency because they've been sitting for a while. Looks pretty good. I do like them a little bit thicker. Let's mix that up a little bit more. Feels like it thickened up as it's been sitting, as often does. But it does help keep air bubbles out. I do have a few little air bubbles that are popping up in the one I just finished. Not too many, but. All right, so this one I'm gonna layer white and then blue and then green. And this one. So green, I typically, you know, you'd get in the outside rings. And I think what I wanna try and do is tip off the green at the top where the sky is and then just bring it back down and just have the green on one side of it. That's what I did for the one I showed you at the beginning and I'll see if I can recreate that. Oh, I love this Payne's Gray and it dries really dark too but when you lighten it up with any kind of white it just becomes this beautiful deep rich Turquoise aqua, I don't know what you, it's just beautiful. And now this sap green. So another nice full cup of paint. Okay, I shouldn't need those and I want to get clutter out of the way when I'm 
doing stuff. I've knocked things over and if I don't keep them out of the way. So, got that all cleaned out. Oops, shouldn't matter. But I'm going to put some of this blue around the edges just so it doesn't get caught on some of this canvas when I'm spreading it around. I mean, I could do this with any color, but I usually choose one of the darker ones. And I see people are so neat when they're painters and I'm not. Try to get better and better at being organized because I do think there's more room for error when you're messy and disorganized and cluttered. Mistakes happen. So it's really just enough paint. Um, maybe it was like one and a half ounces of paint that I just kind of coat the same ratio in this little cup. It's still two to one. Thinned a little with water. And covered my sides just so it flows easier and then if I've missed any I'm not going to have any when I'm tilting bare spots. Okay. Start with the green. Ah, deep breath. I always have to take a deep breath and pour. <laughs> There's no color yet, so I'm just going to pour straight until the blue starts coming. Here it comes. I'll do a little bit of wiggle jiggle now. That just makes a little bit bigger rings, I think, but you can just pour it straight down. It's still going to make a design. And then as I get closer to this inching out, I'm just going to go to a straight. It just makes tighter rings. I'm leaning on my arm, my hand so much. Ah, any little movement changes the pattern. So, because I know, again, I'm always going to mess up the center, I have my little skewer ready. <laughs> so, let's just go like this and fix it. Get this out of the way. And let's see how this goes. I really like the this I want to try or this do I want to try to have the bottom. We'll see how it goes when I'm tilting it. Actually, kind of maybe. Oops, that stuck. Because the brighter blues up there and there's less green might be hoof me to gonna go in that way. So let's try that. Since I have a goal, not having too much green up there, it's already, it's just like naturally taking care of itself because I chose to tilt up there first. Good. And I don't think for this one, you know, the last one I tilted it all around all four corners, but if I do that here, I'm going to lose more of the green and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to start up having that blue kind of roll over. We'll stop there. And we'll go up here. I do want some of the white streaks, so not quite as much as I hoped I'd get, but pretty cool looking sky. So let me think about this. I think I'll go over here. Kind of watching what it's doing. And I like the green. I don't want to lose too much of it. So I think I'll stop right there. Bring it back up. And we'll bring it back down here. So it's a little bit too far over. Get more towards right in the corner. The weight of the paint. Okay. Come on, baby. Hold on. I don't want it to roll over itself. Okay. 
I want it to move so it looked like it was starting to roll over itself and I don't want that to happen because I don't want to lose all the so let's see if I can help it start to move a little just kind of get it don't roll over the green let the green lead the way I don't know if that'll help, but let's give it a try. Come on. I'm, the blue wants to roll over the green. It's irritating me. But I don't think there's anything I tried to fix it. I just don't think I can. Let's see what happens, though. I can get this green over there and then tilt it back kind of straight up I can tip that big blob of white off since I didn't really get the stuff I wanted. Okay. That's not too bad. That definitely can have like a mountain bear. My mountain bear stencil. Kind of have the green here and a night sky. I've got some kind of air bubbles that are giving it a cool star effect. I'm pleased enough with that. This is going to dry really dark down here, but the green looks really cool in that blue. Take off my gloves. Which even when I do that, I still, I make a mess of myself. I just don't know how people stay so clean. <laughs> I'm not one of them. And now I don't know if I can take you in a little closer, maybe. Let's see. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. It's my first one. So here's some of the detail. I really like the way I get the green stripey look and kind of the night sky look. And for the tree background, oops, let me move my light. Sorry, if I still have the window glare. I apologize. So this one, it looks really purple right now, but it's actually going to darken up quite nicely. And I think I've got a nice wood grain looking one there. So I hope you like this, learned a little something, and uh, thanks for watching.